Welcome to the lessons about using the Doppler equation. It's a tricky equation that can be simplified if we take a careful look at how it works. The Doppler equation relates to the frequency of a source and a listener. Because the frequency experienced by the listener can be changed by moving the two closer or further, we need to look at their velocities. A source makes the sound, which is then multiplied by a fraction which contains several velocities. The velocity of the wave itself, v, the velocity of the source, vs, and the velocity of the listener, VL. Remember, all the values have to be in the correct units. So, when all of those are combined, they equal the new or experienced frequency by the listener in hertz, of course. The fraction in the middle is probably the most confusing part of the equation. It has pluses, minuses, and several velocities, but before we substitute, we need to simplify it. We need to first predict if the frequency will be made larger or smaller. We already know that objects that approach one another will result in a higher frequency for the listener. When the source and listener are getting further apart, the frequency will decrease. Remember this, because Doppler calculations can be tricky, but if you know the type of change that should happen, it's not difficult to fix. So, closer means higher frequency, further means lower frequency, now comes the tough bit, choosing signs in the equation. In the first part of Doppler, we'll only be dealing with one object moving. Either the source or the listener, not both. So, you can eliminate some of the complicated bits. This makes a little more sense now. Let's study a source that is approaching us. So, let's see what that actually means. When the source is moving toward a listener, we know that the frequency should be increasing, so the fraction must get bigger. So, when using the velocity of a source, use the first equation. Since the velocity of the source, Vs, is in the denominator, we have to use the negative sign. So the bottom part of the fraction is smaller. Let's put some numbers into this. The ambulance in the picture is making a 500 hertz noise while traveling at 25 meters per second towards the listener. The speed of the sound in this example is 340 meters per second. So we use the equation for a moving source. We substitute the velocity of the waves into both Vs on top and bottom. We also subtract the velocity of the ambulance. This has the effect of making the fraction bigger. So when I multiply it by the frequency of the source, 500 hertz, it makes a larger number. An observer would hear the siren at about 539.68 hertz. That means that the listener frequency is larger than the source frequency, just as we predicted. The prediction part of your approach is vital when looking at these questions as it's quick to realize when you've made a mistake with sign or maybe even chosen the wrong equation.
What about a listener that is moving away from the source? We know that should result in a lower frequency. Let's work through an example together. In this example, the ambulance is now parked stationary and another vehicle is leaving the scene of the accident. The person in the car is traveling at 40 meters per second away from the ambulance. Remember that the speed of sound is still 340 meters per second and the ambulance siren makes a frequency of 500 hertz. So now we use the equation that has a moving listener or observer. We also know that the frequency should get lower. Since VL is the numerator, we need to use the negative sign to make the fraction smaller. So 340 meters per second for both the wave velocities and negative 40 for the VL or velocity listener. All multiplied by 500 hertz from the source. That gets us a listener or observer frequency of 441.18 hertz. Just like we predicted. It's lower than the original frequency. This is what the person in the car would be hearing. Remember, learning to predict the change in frequency is key to making sure that Doppler is an easy part of any exam you write.